Hello, and welcome to the Finding Wisdom show. Thank you for watching our show. Today's topic is the effects of alcoholism on family members. This is part two. Um, do you or anyone else you know know someone who's affected by alcoholism? Um, many people are affected in one way or another with alcoholism. Today we're going to talk a little bit more again about how people are affected by alcoholism and how they're coping with it. And we're going to try to go over some more information on how to help someone who is living with someone who is affected, or who is an alcoholic. It's a very uh, touchy topic for me, and I hope that this show will help someone who is out there experiencing uh, living with someone who they love very dearly that is affected by the uh, person they're living with drinking too much alcohol and not knowing how to help them to change their lives and make it better. Um, hopefully someone out there will be able to use some information from this show to make their lives better and also the person who is the alcoholic can find a way to get help. That is my goal. Hopefully we'll reach it. If you would like to um, go to my email address, it's enlightenmentsing at yahoo.com and you can give me some responses if you want to be on the show or you know of a way to help someone who is uh, codependent of someone who is an alcoholic. Okay, today I have with me Karen Martin, is my guest. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And I have with me Erlene Alcinder. Hello. Thank you so much for being <laughs> here. Um, I, I wanted to ask you both today to just share with me uh, what is your what was your experience like dealing with the person who you loved so dearly and how was it what was the breaking point for you the the tough love part how did that come out and how was it to get the person who was drinking so much to stop what did you experience mentally how was it that transformation uh, it to was that point? so painful mm. I think there was a lot of um, I don't have control yes. that he's grown yes he's an adult yes um, I unfortunately had both my father and my son and by the way my father was a policeman yes oh big problem and so <laughs> after work oh. policemen always join at the bar. Yes. yes. And so there would be four or five policemen sitting around the bar drinking. Mm -hmm. And so as we were growing up, it was part of the thing to, to do. do. We knew where to find dad. Mm -hmm. And we would actually, as we got old enough, mm -hmm. um, I didn't as much, but uh, my sister always joined dad. Okay. She was the youngest one. The rest mm -hmm. of us were gone. And so she would, she knew where dad was and she and her best friend would go to the bar and sit and have a couple of drinks with dad. Right. So for us, it was like part of the thing to do. Yes. And you know, as you, you say, well, how did it affect us? Um, Earlene and I were talking earlier and we realized that um, it's, it's not even just my father, my brother has grown right into that same set so that in his house he has beer on tap. Anytime he wants that beer, he can mm -hmm. go and grab that beer, sit down, work for a while. He's a functioning alcoholic. Yes. He doesn't even know it. Yes. He doesn't even know it. Mm -mm. That's amazing. Do you, do you think there's a lot of people out here today that are alcoholics and don't realize it? Yes. How, how do they realize when they're at that point? I mean, there's a lot of professionals. We have doctors, lawyers. I mean, everybody's affected. Airplane pilot. One Everybody. way or another. Because Everybody. It, you know, people are under so much stress, and people don't talk about the stress that they're under, especially, like you say, your father's a policeman. Mm -hmm. All the things that they have to see during that day, right. and they cannot, they are not, they are not allowed to come home and talk about right. what they see. So they had to keep all of this in. So that's what sometimes um, make them start drinking just to cope with what they had to go through that day. Or if you come home and you don't have a spouse that you can talk to, it's about communication that I think will help a, a alcoholism, a alcohol person to cope with it. 
to let them know. I mean, I mean, sometimes you have to break the guards down and say, look, you're hurting me too. You had you be tears right. in your eyes. You be right. crying. You be standing up all night waiting for this person to come in. You don't know what happened with this person. You know, you 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 scared out of your mind. Lord, please let this person come home. I remember my son coming home and telling me he don't even know how he got home. He don't even know. He was in uh, way in Brooklyn somewhere. You understand? I'm calling him because I know once I talked to him on the phone. I know when he had two men to drink, and I said, where are you? Where are you? Tell me where you at so I can come and get you. No, Mom. I said, boy, if you don't tell me, I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to hurt you. Sometimes I had to literally tell him, to make him tell me where he was at. And guess what? You think I didn't go where he was at? And the last time I did, I said, look, let me tell you something. This is what we're going to do. Since you want to drink, Mama's going to drink with you. I'm going to do just what you do, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do it better. That boy said, no, Mama, you can't come. You can't. You can't do it. We're going to go home. But see, things like that, Look at that. you have to do it. Because I told him, I said, look, you want to get down? Mama going to show you how to do it better than you can. And you yeah. think I can't show you? <laughs> oh We're going to get drunk together tonight. Yeah. And he seen I was there because he know 